So you're going to make sure you've got right side facing out and it's the same side as what you just worked your sleeves onto. But if you can't remember, go to the top of where you very first started your, your um, cardigan and your starting tail, this is the opening at the neck, your starting tail is going to be on the left hand side if you're right handed. If you are left handed it's going to be on the left hand side. And that is the, the right side because the first double crochet row is the nice side and that's the back. See how that's kind of all wiggly and it's, it's more bumpy? And when you flip it over this is more flat and you've got like real direct lines. So I'll show you that again. You've got a flat side and the, the lines go, there's like one that goes to the slants to the right. And you flip it over and you've got like bumps. It's, all, it's kind of all bumpy. I'm sure you can't see that on the camera but But yeah, that's how you can tell the right side, but your yarn tail is going to be on the left hand side. So making sure it's the right side, you're going to join your yarn. Now you may have yours already still attached, but I cut mine off because I was playing mega yarn chicken because I didn't have enough of the grey, I only had the two. Where's my crochet hook gone? I only had the two balls of the grey. If I had three, I definitely would have made it okay. So I'm just going to finish that off. And then find my green, because this is what I'm going to do with all the edging, because I have enough of this green. And even if this ball runs out, I'll just show you how much I've got left. Even if this ball runs out, um, I've got another one, so it's all good. So you can see quite a lot that left there. And all these bits hanging out, we're going to fix those later. So we're going to join our yarn in and what we're doing is just crocheting along the bottom and then we're going to turn and come back the other way. We're just only going to be working on the bottom at once. I have made a cardigan, the baby cardigan. I'm pretty sure I worked all the way around in one go. but I, I And you can do that on this cardigan if you want to. You can use that video as a guide. It's it's basically the same. You're just going to have a lot more stitches. But I, I just didn't like how it looked at the top near the if pretending if this was the neck. I didn't like how it looked up near the top corner on the neck. So I'm going to try this way for a different way. And I got this idea. I've got a cardigan that I got that's my mum's, and I looked at the band that is on that, and instead of the band working worked all the way around sort of the opening of the cardigan it's worked in sections and it was worked bottom first then the sides like where your buttons would go and then the neck so that's what I'm going to try for this pattern for something different so I'm going to chain one just to um, start off my row then we are going to single crochet into the first stitch. I don't know if you could hear that. That was next door's kid. <laughs> Just heard him yelling out. So go into here. It's probably the first time I've ever had children sounds in my videos. We're going to single crochet. And I don't know why that's making me giggle. <laughs> We're going to single crochet all the way across. Don't work it too tight. If you find that it's becoming too tight then use a bigger crochet hook I'm just working over my yarn tail so I'm not having to sew them in later we're going to work all the way across and I will meet you when we are up the other side so I've crocheted my way across and I'm only working on the bottom edge of the cardigan. This is the side edge where the buttons would go. I'm not going to turn the corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one and I'm going to go back in the other direction. Now you're going to get a lot of crochet in your face whilst I turn this around. Because it's getting pretty big now. And it is a little bit difficult sometimes with bigger projects with this sort of set up. 
So now we're just going to single crochet back in that same stitch. Some people, um, or some patterns or whatever, will have a chain one and they'll count that as their first stitch and then they will single crochet into there, being the, being the second stitch because that's the first one and your chain counts as your first stitch. But I'm going to be different and I'm going to ignore the chain one and only work in the single crochet when I come back. So I'm just going to single crochet in a couple of times. So when I come back on my next row, I'm going to come across and single crochet into the top of the single crochet there. This is your chain one down here. And it's just so tiny that sometimes you miss it and the sides of your work, instead of going straight, will start to angle in towards the middle. And I know that's a very common problem, especially for beginners. And you know what, not even just beginners, I still do it because I don't pay attention and I crochet in way or long and I've done you know six or ten rows and I'll look back and then go what is that, it's not straight and it's because I've missed that last stitch because I've done probably done just a chain one and it hasn't stood out like a single crochet does yeah so that's what we're going to do, we're going to single crochet backwards and forwards only on the bottom of our cardigan if you're choosing this band but you can do the other video that's fine but this is what we're doing in this video to try something different to see how it looks obviously I've never tried it so we're gonna find out so work as many rows as you want I'm what did I, I think I did six on the band on the wrist was it one two three four five six yeah so I'm gonna do six on here just to make it look even now I'm just at the end and this is what I'm talking about see the single crochet it kind of stands out like you know it stands right out like that and you can see it's got two loops on the top so you just go into there and you go through both loops and now if this was our last stitch so let's let's say this was our second last stitch and our chain one was going to be our our um, last stitch we're gonna have to find this little tiny thing to try and crochet into it's not happening people is it you're gonna miss that especially if you're watching TV so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna crochet into a single crochet so we chain one to the, when we get to the end and single crochet in the first stitch so that when it comes back to that stitch it's easy to find when we get to our last stitch we're just going to finish off leave about oh hang on a minute hold that thought If you've finished on the right side of your work, I'm just looking at mine off camera. I haven't. I finished on the wrong side of my work. Um, I was going to say you could just work along here, but mine's on the wrong side. So I, yeah, I'm going to have to cut it off and go to the other end. So, yeah, jeez, I'm. I'm not on a roll today am I? So if you're on the right side of your work don't cut your work because you can crochet down the side edge. If you are on the wrong side like I am you will need to cut your yarn which is not a problem. Oops. Cut your yarn and then pull through. We can always crochet over these ends so we don't have to worry about sewing it in. And now just bear with me whilst I'm off camera. I'm just making sure that my cardi is the right way out and that edging looks really good awesome 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 and so now when I look at my cardigan it's so big going back in so big now now look at my cardigan the right side is the if you're looking at the cardigan it's on the left hand side here is my right hand side where my yarn tail finished off so I'm going to connect my yarn here and then I'm going to work the it's like the inside edge where our buttons would go can zoom out, oh there we go can zoom out, I thought it was already zoomed out so we're now going to be working up the edgings of our cardigan now I'm going to be going up the edge and then back down 
I'm not going to, be going to be going around the neck. You can do this if you want to, but you will need to go to the child size cardigan video, and I will put a link in the description box for that, and and follow what I've. Oh, it's really windy outside. And follow what I've done on that one for the around the neck. I'm not going to show you how to do that on this one. I'm doing this one a different way. I'm just going to be working the bands. So work this side, then I'm going to go work this side, and then I'm going to work the neck separately. So grab your colour you want to use. I'm going to use the green, because that's all I've got, because I've got no grey left. <laughs> and I'm going to attach my yarn on this corner. So now we want to figure out where we want to put our buttons. Now I've just laid mine out. I've gone every fifth row. Right up the top there we're going to need one that looks like it's sort of in the middle of nowhere that's actually going to go on our neck band. So one button will have to sit up the top there and then I've counted down every five rows. I'm going to double check that before I actually sew them on of course and make the buttonholes. But about every five rows and then I'm just going to put two at the bottom there and this is when we needed the stitch markers that I said. I do need to go and find some more. But what these stitch markers for, stitch markers are for, is on our buttons, our buttons go on our left hand side. That's what I've noticed with all my cardigans. I don't know if that's a female thing, it could be. And we're going to sew our buttons on our left hand side when we're wearing it. So it's actually, if you're looking at it, it's on the right hand side now. So our buttonholes need to go on this side when we make our button band. So we're going to grab our stitch marker and put it adjacent to where we want to put our buttons. So that when we are... I'm going to do these up in a minute, but I've only got one hand. When we are making our button band, so this is what we're going to do next, that's where we need to make our holes. So you're going to do that all the way where you want to put your button band. <laughs> yeah, your button band. So this is going to be where the holes are on your band. Every time I say button band, I think of when in Shrek and the gingerbread man says the muffin man. I don't know why. The muffin man. And this at the end. Do you know the muffin man? <laughs> yeah, really don't know why. So on your button band, you're going to put all your stitch markers because when we pick our crochet up, all the buttons are going to fall off. So we want to know where to put our holes for our buttons. So I'm going to do the rest of these off the computer, uh, sorry, where am I? Off the video camera, which would be your computer probably. And I'm going to add the others so that when we crochet along in our next bit, we know when to do it. So I'll be back in just a minute. So here we go. I've got all my stitch markers on. I couldn't find any stitch markers in my immediate vicinity. So just use some yarn to tie it on with. And we've got all the way up the top, and there's going to be one on the neckband, but we don't have that yet, so I couldn't mark that. So now we're going to show you how to put the button band on. The muffin band. So I'm looking at the right side of my work, and I'm going to go down here to the bottom. This is the bottom band. And our first row is just single crochet all the way across, and on our return row, that's when we're going to do the buttonholes. So this one's easy. We're going to single crochet into that very first stitch and then we're working into the ends of the rows. So we're going to single crochet into the ends of each of the rows. Try and go over to under, sorry, two loops if you can. It just makes a firmer edge and you won't create a big hole in your crochet. And as you're going across, if your work lays flat, you may, it means you've done it right. If it starts to curl up, it means it's too tight, you've got not enough stitches. And if it starts to go wavy, it means you've got too many stitches on the edging, on this side bit that we're working on. 
So my rule of thumb is I do two single crochets per double crochet row. So I'll do one there and about one there, one there, one there, one in the grey, another one in the grey. If you find that doesn't work for you, you may have to adjust it. You could do like two in one, three in the next, or it's, it depends on the tension and everything. So we are all going to be slightly different. So I've just finished off my single crochet rows and I'm going to go, I'm gonna, I usually work sort of into there. So I try and get two loops. I think I've only got one there. No, I've got two. No, I've got one, sorry. There we go, now I've got two. And then I'm just gonna normally I'd try and find another space to go but I can't so I'm gonna go in there and then into here and I'm not pulling tight on my stitches either because I don't want it to pucker up So there's not really a stitch there to work into. You're kind of just making your own spot to work into. And we're going to do this all the way across. Oops. Until we get to the other end. And I'll show you what to do. And that's that is curving in a little bit, but if you just give it a little bit of a a tug, because I'm working over my tail, so that does actually pull it in tighter like that. Just give it a gentle tug, and it will fix it and straighten it out. And you can block your work if you need to, and that's going to help. If, it, if it's curling in too much like that, you can just give it a spray that you can pin it down onto something on a towel or a piece of squishy fabric like this or um, a blocking board if you've got one, pin it down and then spray it and leave it to dry and it should dry straight for you. So I'm going to continue across and I'm going to make... Once we get to the end, this I'm at the top and this is the where the neck is, we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet back in that same space. And we're going to work our way along to our first stitch marker. So for me it's about there. Although we can see it on the other side here, this green tab. So I'm going to work my way across to there. And you want to stop one stitch before it. So where is it? There. So I'm going to go that stitch. All these ends are in the way. Let me just scoot them to the back. I need to sew them in, don't I? <laughs> Get them out of the way. So my stitch marker's there, this green loop. And I'm going to take that as that stitch. So I'm going to go crochet in the next one. And I'm going to grab my button. And depending on what size button you have is going to depend on what you're going to do so I'm going to chain one because I've only got a small button I'm going to skip a stitch and single crochet in the next I'm going to grab my button and go and see if it will go through the chain one space that I just created let me just get that out of the way you can't actually see that but if you put your button in and when you push it you don't want it to fall through, you want it to be quite snug. I've got a bit of um, grip in there so it's not going to, like it's not loose as you can see. And I can push it through. I'm just going to try that again. Yep, I think that's quite good. If your hole's too big, so let's say if I did two chains. And if you do two chains, you're going to skip 
two spaces so one two and then single crochet in the next ones if you do hole too big you'll be able to push it through way too easy but there's no grip on that at all it's really loose and through wear it's going to get looser so you want it quite snug to start with So I'm going to do a chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next. I'm going to work to my next stitch marker, which is here. I'm going to do the same thing. Got up to my stitch marker, I'm going to chain one, I'm going to skip one, and single crochet in the next. We're going to repeat this all the way across. So I'm up to the end. I've done, no, I haven't. I'm going to do a chain one, single crochet. And when we single crochet back across, when we get to a chain one space, got one here, we're going to single crochet into that chain one space. So go in there with your crochet hook and then do a crochet. Another chain one space there. I'm going to single crochet in that. And we're going to work our way all the way back across, repeating that as we go. If you need to do more rounds, you, uh, sorry, rows, you can, but I think that's enough for the size button that I have. So I'm only going to do that amount. So once we get to the end, we're going to finish off so you can pull your yarn through and cut your yarn I cannot find my scissors, I will be back so I'll cut that off later but what you want to do is find the other side of your opening to your cardigan and which is on the other side you're just going to crochet again on the right side facing you like we did on this one but instead of on that second round a second row, sorry sorry I keep getting confused with that, it's annoying it's annoying me. Uh, on your second row, instead of doing a chain one space for your buttons, you're not going to do any chain one spaces at all. It's just all plain single crochet and you can do as many rows as you like. Then, after we've done that, we are ready for the neck. I've actually already done my other side of my button band, so I'm very lucky. I had some spare crochet time so I thought I would just put that on because I don't need to show you that part in the video because it's very easy. Now we're going to work on the neck opening of our cardigan. So my yarn's already attached here because I finished off that button band just before. But if your yarn isn't attached already, you can just join it in. You're going to join it into the first stitch and then we're going to single crochet. Oops, do I have a chain one there? Yes, I've got a. Yeah, we're going to need a chain one there. So, chain one, single crochet in the first stitch. And basically, how many rows across you've got? I've got three. You're going to do three single crochet, one in each at the end of each row. Try and get under two loops if you can. When we get to this um, next section, so for me it's the grey part, what we're going to do is, we're actually, you can crochet into the chain from the start, but that leaves this big hole. So what I like to do is find the two legs of the double crochet stitch here and here, and just go in the middle there with your crochet hook, and work your single crochet gives it a nicer edge and it doesn't pull up this massive big loop and look really weird so again just here and you're going to complete this all the way around when you get to the increase there you're going to go into that one and into that one so you can see there each stitch is worked in between and this is the increase from our first row and I've gone one into that and one into that and we're just going to continue along 
sorry the video cut off before because my camera filled up so that's why it ended quite short I probably sounded like I was rushed so in between we're going to work this all the way around our neck until we get to the other side I've reached my end so I'm going to chain one single crochet now on our neck on the other end of where we are at the moment this is where we're going to do our button hole and what I've done is I've just placed a stitch marker in a approximate spot and where the button hole is going to be that's just to remind me to do that because I know I'll get up to the end and I'll forget so I'm going to crochet across I'm just still working single crochet and I'll meet up with you when I get back to the other end for the buttonhole. I'm up to where I need to put my buttonhole in, so it was just reminding me that I needed to do that. And I'm going to put my single crochet here, chain one, skip one, and then single crochet in the last stitch. And then I'm going to find a button and just make sure. that it's going to be in the right spot yeah that's where I have the right spot to the other ones that are on there so chain one and we're going to turn our work and single crochet back across you can do as many rounds as you like on the neck where's that chain one space there we go into that chain one space you can do as many rounds as you like on the neck I'm probably just going to do three like I've done on the edging here so I'm going to finish this off when we get to the end we're going to finish off our yarn like we have been doing and then we're going to sew in all of our ends and we're just about done we just need to sew in our buttons so yippee to sew on your buttons you may need a smaller needle because my yarn needle does not go through the holes on the button you may also need matching thread this is a smaller needle and as you can see it goes through quite well but I plan to use some yarn as my cotton or my thread to sew my buttons on this is obviously too thick but most yarn has plied to it so what you can do is just pull apart the pliers I'm going to do two and then I'm going to try and do two if you do it slowly it shouldn't knot up haha <laughs> so that too quick didn't I but you get the drift I'm grabbing the wrong ones that's why I'm gonna try it from the other end but that's what you do just undo your pliers of your yarn when you grab the right ones it's really easy to do so lining up your buttonhole to your button band you're going to place your button and you're going to sew it to your button band which is the side with no holes on it so I'm going to do this off camera because I've got a lot to do so get all these ends out of the way I still haven't sewn them in button band the button band and then line it up like so and sew your button on the bottom layer so here is my finished cardigan and I am so excited I love it love it love it love it really really excited so if you have followed along this far thank you so much for sticking with the video I hope you enjoyed it share your creation on our Facebook page the link that you need is in the description box also, if you're on Instagram, don't forget to tag me in your creation. I would love to see what you've been up to and also the colours that you have chosen for yours. Thanks for watching. Till next time, happy crochet. Bye.